Good morning, and thank you for coming. So, is the audio okay, so? Yeah. Uh, so, I want to tell you this morning what uh, you have to expect from the GR framework in the next weeks. I will give a presentation about what GR is capable of doing today and what you will, can, what you will uh, be able to do in the next, uh, let's say, uh, two months. So, what are the uh, GR framework's uh, goals? Uh, the primary goal is to have a performant graphics library which can be used for REPL languages like Python and Julia. And uh, it should be simple. It should be simple to install and it should be device independent. Not only platform independent, but also device independent. We take high value on, the, on this fact that you get the same output on different output devices. And by the way, GR seems to be the default backend for the plot as library from Tom Bradoff uh, since uh, some weeks. I didn't mention that, but uh, I was surprised to see that. And I'm glad that it's now the default backend. So let's have a quick start. It's very easy to install the GR framework. You simply uh, add the GR uh, package with the add command, package add command, and the system will then download a pre-built uh, runtime for your platform, and then you are already uh, to to, gener to generate the first plot, as in this example, a simple histogram. Uh, there are a lot of supported platforms where you can install GR in this way. Uh, most Linux flavors are supported, and uh, even Raspberry Pis will work with the GR framework without any additional package. So our strategy is, and that's very important for me, we don't want any dependencies to other packages, especially not to Python packages, because we had a lot of problems mixing Julia and Python in our company. So what can you do with the GR framework? For example, you can uh, use the MATLAB layout to produce uh, plots which you can uh, create with MATLAB. This is a simple example here for a, for a two-dimensional plot, which can, which has a similar syntax than a MATLAB script. So you have two-dimensional functions and you have three-dimensional functions. In this case, here you can see that uh, there's uh, <coughs> that GR is displaying an ISO surface and uh, creating a movie from this ISO surface, which is then displayed. You can not only render ISO surfaces, you, you can also create slices in all directions. And this is here a quick example how this can be managed uh, using the GR3 com components of GR. This is a new feature in the current version. We also have integrated a package from one of my colleagues called Mowgli, which allows you to draw molecules as he shown in this example where we render DNA molecule uh, uh, with, with uh, different viewpoints. GR is also capable of working together with Interact. Uh, you can see here that you can use knobs to change the color map or to change the view angle for a three-dimensional scene, which is uh, generated by a simple surface command. GR is in the meantime also uh, capable to, to play nicely with Atom. You can use a plot pane and update your plot uh, in real time. Uh, by the way, you can, you can also use different themes depending on your Atom theme to, to get the right colors. The same applies to Interact, uh, but right now we have no solution here to generate uh, animated plots. This will be possible in the near future because we will embed in the JavaScript backend for our software. For those of you who have access, for example, to a supercomputer, this might be interesting that you can use the GR frame with an item and then create inline graphics in an item, tray, uh, item two for, for the Mac. I think there are similar solutions for Linux. They should work in a similar way. Uh, now we also have support for QML, a, a very nice package from our Belgian colleague uh, Bart Janssens, who has written a QML package for Julia. And here you can see the first steps uh, to get GR interactive. 
uh, you can use sliders to, to, to uh, animate the plot or resize the plot. And it's very simple to integrate. Then, that's also a new feature, we have now remote display support. Suppose you have access to a supercomputer and you want to, to create a power uh, three-dimensional graphics on your local desktop, then you can set up a, a socket connection from GR without any X display or other protocol which would uh, slow down the connection. And uh, in this case, the complete GR stream is serialized over the TCP socket stream and then uh, displayed on the server side. You simply call the main loop and this will accept every connection from a remote display. So what are our count activities? We want to uh, add two major components to GR. One of those is a QT terminal. This means that, the, that there is a new output device, but as opposed to the others, uh, it's not connected to our uh, low-level graphics kernel system, but it's directly connected to, uh, to the GR uh, core. This allows very uh, good interaction. For example, you can uh, get the coordinates of a QT term of the graphs or plots in your terminal. And uh, the second component, component uh, will be a JavaScript terminal, which you may embed in uh, HTML5 or in any browser or whatever you want uh, to use it. For this purpose, we want to simplify our wrappers and use a cons consolidated convenience layer in all the existing wrappers. So this is a sneak preview of how uh, the QT terminal works. You can see here that there's a continuous display of, a, of some Bessel functions. It's slowed down just to, sh to show how it, it will work. You have the same functionality that you might uh, uh, use from Plotly or other, or, or, or Bouquet or from other uh, packages. The same applies to the JavaScript terminal. Uh, you can zoom, pan, and all these things. You can resize your plot and you can use it uh, in your browser or in another uh, HTML5 capable uh, application like Interact, for example. So what's going here behind the scenes? So uh, the GR core will serialize uh, all its graphics output uh, using a JSON protocol. This will then be sent over TCP socket to a terminal or to a, a JavaScript terminal. That's the, 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 the content that's sent is, is kind of a, a series of figure, plot, subplot, and data commands. Uh, and both of those new components will use a convenience layer, which makes it easier for us to, to maintain the, the package for different languages and for different backends. You can use this for, Iju for iJulia, for the Jupyter Notebooks, and for example, for any browser on your desktop workstation. The iJulia connection will not require Python, uh, and that's why we have a little delay, and I can't uh, show you a productive version right now. So in principle, you are using two instances of uh, GR, one which does the real plots and one which, uh, which produces the output on your device. You can uh, create continuous displays uh, with full interaction and there are no hooks into any graphical user interface event loops, which uh, normally causes a lot of struggle because in this case, we have two different processes. These are some use cases uh, on our side, for example, a remote access uh, to our supercomputer graphics or we are setting up sample database to give our users the uh, possibility to evaluate their data uh, using a browser interface. So what's the roadmap? Uh, we want to consolidate all our high-level plot functions and use a convenience layer for that. Right now we have the situation that there is a lot of code in common, for example, in the plot as, uh, uh, plot as backend or in the GR uh, MLAB backend, and we want to uh, consolidate that into one mod uh, module, which will then be written in C, so you will also have even more speed with this new module. And in the first approach, we will uh, make this uh, module available uh, 
using the plot as default backend environment and specify the the required other the desired backend in a in a with a Qt uh, specifier. You can and for the future we also plan to interactively edit and annotate plots uh, in a future Qt term, Qt term version. So you will have kind of a graphics editor. But this is uh, stuff for the next year. Hopefully we will see us then again. And, uh, for the plot as part, it would be good uh, to have some help because uh, Tom Braloff is currently no longer developing uh, his, his very nice package and it's a little bit complicated for me to, to maintain this code. So well, thank you for your attention and here's some information that might be helpful for you to get information about the software and all the contacts. Thank you.